Hello, and welcome to Our Devotions, where together we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Daniel, and this is my amazing wife, Amanda. Hello, today we're going to be talking about hard hearts, starting off in the book of Exodus. So grab your Bible and get ready to dive right in with us. So I'm excited. We're taking a journey through our Bibles, and we are in Exodus chapter 5. Moses has just gotten this call from God, and after his argument with God, where he lost, which is what happens when you argue with God, <laughs> and, uh, it up. He, he comes out and he comes to Pharaoh and says, hey, you need to let the Israelites go. And Pharaoh's response in, in Exodus chapter 5, verse 2, Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I will not let Israel go. And this sets the stage for a, almost a contest with God. Where, yeah, I guess so. The he's, like, he's like, who's God and why should I listen? And he's got so many gods that he worships. And actually, if we begin to look at the 10 plagues, if you're familiar with the plagues that come on Israel, on, Israel, on Egypt, when they wouldn't let Israel go, he takes on the different gods of Egypt the different God that was supposed to protect the Nile, the different God that was supposed to, and there's all these different gods, and each of the different plagues address these different, these different gods. Yeah. But as we go through this, you find that Pharaoh doesn't want to listen. And things would happen, and he would have magi- magicians that would try to copy the work. Um, but even his mag- magicians, by chapter 8, verse 15 had told him, hey, you, you, you've got to do something. Right. Like, this, is, this is God. <laughs> yeah, they realized they didn't have the power. Yeah, they're like, hey, we can't, we can't mimic this. And it goes through and he says uh, that when Pharaoh saw there was respite, he hardened his heart and would not listen to them as the Lord had said. And sometimes when people read this, they go, hey, did God harden Pharaoh's heart or did Pharaoh guard harden his heart because sometimes it says it was God. Sometimes it says it was Pharaoh. Like, how does this work? Yeah. And um, the hardening of a heart is the response to stimulation that is ignored. Like when we have a, we get a callus, we we get a callus from something poking us, rubbing us and ignoring it. Yep. Um, You start the summer with bare feet and everything hurts. And then by the end of the summer, you just run wherever and you're fine. Because you begin to ignore it and you begin to build up um, a hardness to it. And what it's referencing right here is Pharaoh's like, hey, I will let God's people go. I will let them go. This is ridiculous. Just make the frogs stop. And Pharaoh, uh, Moses says, all right. And he, he prays. Oh, actually, he says, Pharaoh, when do you want him to go? And he says, tomorrow. He says, okay. Why tomorrow? Why would you wait? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but... When Moses prays and he sees that he has respite, he has um, relief, he goes, all right, I don't need to let them go anymore. And when he begins to um, repent, get out of the consequences, and then go back, this hardens a heart. And you go, it is his response to God that hardens his heart. Every time that God gives him an opportunity and he turns it down, that is how a heart gets hard. It's how Moses' heart got, got hard. And it's how our hearts get hard. Pharaoh's. Yeah. You said Moses. Well, yep. Pharaoh. Pharaoh's the one with the hard heart. Moses was a soft heart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for catching that. Um, but like I went through this story and just started like writing down, hey, when did his heart get hard? I'm like, well, it started with, I don't know who he is. Why should I listen? And he started to resist. And once he started yeah. to resist, then some, you get some of his pride. You get some of this going, no, I can push back. Yeah. He had some people, he refused to listen, he looked for excuses, he kept returning to his old ways. And I think that's so huge for us. Absolutely. Um, that it can become come so easy to be like, well, I know that I should, but... Yeah. And that's a really dangerous spot to be. And I, I've heard from people, they go, well, I don't feel bad about it anymore. And you're like, that's not a good thing. Right. Um, <laughs> It, well, and then in the New Testament, it talks about that. Yeah. It says if we keep doing something over and over, that God will turn people over to their sin. And I think it's Proverbs that says there's a way that seems right to a man, but yeah. in the end it leads to death. So we can get to the point where our hearts are so hardened to something that we no longer feel conviction. 
We yeah. no longer feel bad about it. All of a sudden, it's like, you know what? I think I have peace about this. And God's like, no, that's not peace. <laughs> that's just numb. saying, fine, have your way. Yeah, that's callous. That's numb. Hebrews yeah. chapter 3, verse 8 says, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Yes. As in the rebellion. And talks about the Israelites and where they rebelled and where they heard but turned hard. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really powerful thing when we begin to recognize the path that Pharaoh took because the, the, the path that Pharaoh took is not unfamiliar to so many of us. Right, absolutely. Um, and then recognizing that it takes re repentance and then sticking with it. Not repentance until we get out of trouble, right. but repentance going, God, no, I'm sorry. God, I want to listen. Yeah. God, have your way in me. And then we can find freedom. Then we can be restored. I love David's response in Psalm 51. He says, create in me a clean heart. Yeah. And recognizing these spots where we have become pr proud, where we've become calloused, where we've become um, okay with our sin. Right. And when we, when we do repent and when we ask God for a clean heart, he can make us new. But we have to turn from this. Re repentance brings turning, not acknowledging and continuing. Right. And that comes from knowing the word of God and saying, okay, what does the word say? Is my life living up to that? And not just how do I feel about how my life is, living, is behaving, you know, like yeah. just like how Pharaoh could harden his heart. Just because we feel okay with a particular sin, if God says not to do something, then we need to change our life and make it line up with the word. Yeah. It's so easy to pick on somebody else's issue. Yeah. And you'd be like, man, they're not doing what the Bible says. But we need to take the, the time to go, all right, am I doing what the Bible says? Are there areas in me that I have been ignoring, that I've become calloused or hardened? Because even as we look at Pharaoh's story, we, we see that Pharaoh's story ended in disaster. Yeah. Because he hardened his heart to such a point that he completely resisted God. And that's not something that we want. Right. Absolutely. Let's say our confessions out loud together, okay? I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I don't have a spirit of fear. I don't have a spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. But of power, love, and a sound mind. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. I am more than a conqueror through him. I am more than a conqueror through him. God is my healer. God is my healer. And redeemer. And redeemer. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I resist the devil. I resist the and devil. He flees from me. And he flees from me. My prayers are powerful. My prayers are powerful. And effective. And effective. God, I thank you that we can have powerful and effective prayers. God, I thank you that we can have soft hearts. And God, for any of us that have gotten calluses in different places in our heart and our conscience, God, that those calluses would be removed. God, give us soft hearts again. Renew a steadfast spirit in us. God, let us hear what you speak. Let us see what you see and feel what you feel. We ask that you would have your way in us and through us, that you would work in our families, that you would work in our careers. God, we ask that you have your way in every part of our life. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. We hope that this blessed and encouraged you. If it did, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, we want to invite you into God's word for yourself to discover who he is and what he has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.